G'day Curd Nerds, today we're going to be making Havati. Now Havati is a, it's a Danish cheese from Denmark and uh, it was invented in, I think it was around 1850s um, by a farmer in Denmark by the name of Hanna. Now Hanna wanted a mild cheese, very mild cheese and Havati is one that has a lovely soft palate. Um, it, it is creamy and it is, uh, it's a delicious cheese. So um, please join me for this Danish cheese, Havati. Well, this video was requested by um, Shireen and she asked for Havati. So the ingredients are 10 liters of full cream milk, an eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic culture. Now this is an aromatic culture. You can use Flora Danica, or I've used a special um, one that I have in my shop. Uh, 2.5 mils or half a teaspoon of calcium chloride, 2.5 mils of liquid rennet, 50 grams of salt and cheese wax. So we're going to bring our milk up to 32 degrees Celsius or 90 Fahrenheit. Then we're going to add our starter culture. This is a Mad Millie aromatic mesophilic, um, otherwise known as Flora Danica if you can get that as well reason I'm using it is because it creates buttery tones in the cheese and it does have some uh, CO2 production so it creates uh, quite small holes or eyes in the cheese without having to use um, Propionic Shimani which uh, is used in Emmental and other cheeses like that. Anyway so stir that through uh, for about a minute. So a good stir. And then we're going to let that uh, rest for about 30 minutes. So after the 30 minutes has elapsed, we're going to give it a stir and add in our calcium chloride. This is diluted in quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. So give that a good mix for about a minute. And then we're going to add our rennet. So this is also diluted in a quarter of a cup of non-chlorinated water. So we mix for no more than one minute now. Um, otherwise the rennet will start to set. So we're going to let that set now, we'll let the curd set. And we're going to start off by trying it at 45 minutes. Um, but I actually had to wait for 50 minutes before I had a proper curd set. So test at the 45 minute mark if it's too sloppy and doesn't get a clean break then um, try another 5 minutes. Just wait for another 5 minutes and there's a lovely clean break there, nice split. Perfect, ready for cutting. I'm going to cut the curd into half inch cubes or 1.25 uh, centimetres. So I'm doing the horizontal cuts there and we'll just do the vertical with the curd knife. Do it one way and then we'll do it perpendicular to the cuts we've just made. firm curd. So we're going to stir, we're not letting that rest at all because the set time was quite long so the curds are quite firm so just give that a stir for about 10 minutes and after 10 minutes just to allow the curd to settle for five. Now in the meantime um, bring up about five litres of water to 77 degrees Celsius 170 Fahrenheit you can see there and we're going to wash the curd. So we're going to now ladle the whey out down to the surface of the curds. And this lowers the acidity of the final cheese. So just take it out until we see the level of the curds. So I've split this next part up. As you can see there. 
nice and zippy. So using the sieve, you actually don't get chunks of curd in the way that you're um, you're removing. So it's a nice little handy tip using the the sieve there with your ladle. And there we go. There's the surface of the curds. So I have taken about five litres of whey out there, approximately. So once you see the level of the curds, that's what you get. And then we give it a stir. This is vitally important or you'll end up with lumpy, very big lumps of curd after you add the warm water in or hot water at 77 degrees Celsius. So give it a good stir. And then we're going to replace the whey with the hot water. Now, if I had an extra pair of hands, I would have stirred this while I was pouring it in, but I only got one set. So unfortunately, I did get a few big lumps of curd. So what I did, I broke those up uh, with my very clean hands um, as I was stirring. So don't be afraid to put your hands into your curds and whey if you need to. Now the new target temperature is going to be 38 Celsius. It should be that all by itself. However, if it's not, um, add a cup of, if it's too hot, add a cup of water, cold water. Uh, and if it's uh, not hot enough, just uh, heat it up with your double boiler until you get to 38 Celsius. So give that a good stir. So we stir initially for 10 minutes and then we're gonna add in the salt. So I've just stopped there for a second to uh, recover the salt. So there's 50 grams of salt or just less than a quarter of a cup. So that's non-iodized cheese salt. So give that a good stir. And we're gonna stir now for another 20 minutes. So after the full 30 minutes, so this is 20 minutes after the first 10 minutes, you can see that the, the curds are about the size of baked beans each cube so you know you've got down to the right size so we're going to let that rest now for 10 minutes let it settle on the bottom of the pot and then we're going to drain it off so we're going to drain through normal cheesecloth so this is loose weave cheesecloth and we're going to reserve the way i'm going to make ricotta out of that later on oh i've got a full bucket get rid of that <laughs> So pop it into your cheesecloth and get any out with your clean hands. There we go. All good. Now any lumps, break them up as well. And now we're going to scoop that, the cheesecloth out, and we're going to put it straight into our mould, our cheese basket. Now I'm using a 165 millimetre cheese basket which will hold all this curds, no problems at all. So just squeeze that in there gently, make sure that there's no uh, loose bits. You don't want to make the sides of the cheese look wonky. So just cover that over, put your follower on top, and then we're going to press quite lightly for 20 minutes at five kilograms. There we go. So 20 minutes later, just uh, finish washing my hands and I'll put some vinegar on there. Just kill any yeasts or moulds that uh, air have been airborne. So we'll just uh, pull that off and take it out of the mould. And we're going to turn it over again and we're going to press further. So we're going to press now for eight hours at 13 kilos or 30 pounds. There we go. So leave that for the eight hours. And now we can take it out. We're not going to brine it because it's already got salt in it, so it's no big deal. So we'll take it out of the mould. And we're going to put it into a ripening box. Now, that one I have there is too small. So I had to run away and go get another one. As you can see there, there's my big red one. 
and it's got a drying mat in the bottom. So pop it in the ripening box and we're going to cover that uh, with the lid. So we're going to pop that away into the cheese cave or the cheese fridge or whatever, whatever you've got. And we're going to mature it at 12 degrees Celsius, 54 Fahrenheit at 90% humidity, which it will create in the maturing box. And we'll do that for four weeks. Now we turn it daily for the, the first week. And then for the last three weeks, there's a little hair there, get rid of that. Bit of fluff. Um, for the last three weeks, we're going to turn it twice weekly. As it says there. <laughs> Alrighty, now you may get a little bit of uh, mould or, or fluff on it, depends on how clean your ripening box is. So just wipe that down with a little bit of brine solution um, once a week. Now, after four weeks, this is what it looks like. It looks lovely. So, now I had the misfortune of vacuum packing, so I don't actually recommend this. I would wax the cheese wheel now because the cheese is really soft and it does form um, eyes because of the mesophilic um, culture, the aromatic culture. Um, we're actually inhibiting that from happening by vacuum packing it. So, wax it. Um, unless you have no other option. So then you mature for another two weeks and then you can eat it. And then here is me, six weeks after we made it, cutting the cheese. It's very soft. And we'll be able to have a look at the inside in a second. There we go, we've got holes. We've got eyes, that's fantastic. That's just how Havarti normally forms. Now, if I had to wax that, the holes probably would have been a lot bigger. So as you can see, lovely, and you'll see inside, sorry for the shaky camera work, I had one hand on cheese and one hand on camera. You can see that there are eyes all through the cheese, which is fabulous. There's the half there. So wonderful, and it did taste amazing. So it has a very subtle flavor. It's very smooth and creamy. It's a delicious cheese. So don't forget to visit our shop to pick up the supplies and check out some of our own uh, other videos. So I've got a feta one there and quick mozzarella. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.